In this section, we'll briefly discuss the case of a time-dependent potential energy. To get a feel for a, a physical system with a time-dependent uh, potential energy, the book asks us to consider a charged uh, Van de Graaff generator. So we imagine we have a Van de Graaff here, um, and it's charging uh, so that the charge on the surface of the Van de Graaff generator is some capital Q, which is a function of time. And so we can imagine, for instance, that the Van de Graaff is charging up, so the Q is either going up, or we could imagine that the Van de Graaff generator has been turned off, and so the Q, uh, large Q, is now leaking out into the atmosphere. The charge is being uh, extracted from the sphere by the air, and in that case, the big Q is going to go down. Now, if we imagine a test charge out somewhere around the Van de Graaff generator, little q, um, that test charge is going to feel a force, given my Coulomb's law over here, and you can see that because big Q is a function of time, the force is going to be a function of time. In other words, the force felt by this little test charge is going to change um, as we let time run on, even if we hold the test charge fixed at a fixed distance from the Van de Graaff generator. And so this is an example where uh, we have a force that has a time dependence. In other words, the force is not just dependent upon uh, position, um, and so this is not a conservative force, and therefore the total energy in the system, the total mechanical energy, kinetic plus potential, for the system is not going to remain a constant. And that may, maybe it's not surprising. Um, and remember, there are two requirements we have in order for a force to be considered conservative. One is that it can only depend upon position, and two, it's that the curl of the force has to be zero. And so this uh, system is a case in which the curl of the force will actually be zero, but because it depends on time, it's not, strictly speaking, a conservative force. And so we can show that the total mechanical energy in this system, in a system like this, where the force, has a non, uh, where the force depends on time, that total mechanical energy is not going to be conserved. Um, if you recall from page 112 in section 4.2, we have this relationship between the work done in moving from position R1 to R2, um, and it's related in the case of a conservative force to the difference between the potentials at those two points, and that is the difference, the exact difference between uh, the exact difference of the potential energy function. When, when, however, we have a work, excuse me, whenever, when, however, we have a force that depends on time, the difference in potential energy, delta uh, u, is no longer just the difference between the two, uh, the potentials at the two points. There's a dependence on time. And so in the case of a, of a force that depends on time, this uh, relationship doesn't hold. Instead, the change in the potential energy for the system now has uh, two terms. The change, delta u, is both related to the positional derivative times the displacement uh, in space, plus now we have a time derivative, uh, which is non-zero for the potential energy. And so then we have to multiply that by uh, the, the amount of time over which the displacement takes place. In the case of a conservative force, this, right, this uh, term right here is zero, and so we only have spatial dependence for the potential energy function. We can, however, still define a work uh, required to move uh, an object from one position to the other, but now in this case uh, the work is not just equal to minus the difference in the potential energy, it's minus the difference in the potential energy, and then we have to take out the time dependence in order to have these things work out. Recall from the work energy theorem that the change in kinetic energy is defined to be equal to that work. That's the, the definition of that that comes from the work energy uh, theorem. And therefore we see that delta T is going to be equal to now minus delta U plus this additional term having to do with the time derivative of the potential energy function. And now instead of getting uh, the change in the kinetic energy plus potential energy equal to zero, it's actually going to be uh, equal to whatever the change in the potential energy is over time. And so this is how that you would change uh, equation 4.19 uh, 
uh, to account for the time uh, dependence of the potential energy function. And so you can see here that, that if this is the total energy of the system, is no longer conserved. The right-hand side is no longer zero. And so in the case of a uh, time-dependent potential energy, the total mechanical energy of the system is not conserved.